This video is over lessons 71 and 72. Lesson 71, parallelograms. Lesson 72, fractions chart and multiplying three fractions. Moving on in three, two, one. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. There are several special properties of parallelograms that you will need to know. First, we're going to take a look at some of the special properties about the sides. In a parallelogram, opposite sides have the same length. So in other words, AB equals CD because side AB is opposite of side CD. Likewise, side VC is equal length to side AD because side VC is opposite of side AD. Moving on in three, two, one. When it comes to angles, there are two special properties that you're going to need to know. First, opposite angles have the same measure. So that means that angle B and angle D here have the same measure. So we can write the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle D. So if I know that this angle is 100 degrees, then I know that that angle is 100 degrees. If I know that this is 135 degrees, then I know that this is 135 degrees. And then these angles here are also opposite of each other and therefore have the same measure. So the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle C. Moving on in three, two, one. The second thing you need to know about the angles of a parallelogram is that consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive means one right after the other. So angle A and angle B are consecutive. B and C are consecutive. C and D are consecutive. And D and A are consecutive. So therefore, Angle A and angle B are supplementary, which we're going to abbreviate as SUPP. And if angle A and angle B are supplementary, then my next two consecutive angles are also supplementary. So angle B and angle C are supplementary. Angle C and angle D are supplementary. And then finally, angle A and angle D are supplementary. And remember that supplementary means they add up to 180 degrees. So let's make a note in here. Add up to 180 degrees. So this angle measure plus this angle measure is 180 degrees. This measure plus that measure is 180 degrees. This measure plus that measure is 180 degrees. And finally, this measure plus that measure is 180 degrees. Moving on in three, two, one. The last two properties we need to know about a parallelogram are perimeter and area. For perimeter we're going to follow this formula. P equals 2B plus 2S. To find the perimeter of any figure we just add up all of its side lengths. So here we have 2B, in other words 
and a parallelogram, we have two bases. And since they're across from each other, we know that they're the same amount, so we can find their sum just by multiplying them by two. And then we have these other two sides, which we label just as sides. And since there's two of them, we can add them up just by multiplying by two. Hence, 2b, there's my 2b's, plus my 2s, there's my 2s. Moving on in 3, 2, 1. So let's take a look at an example and see what our work would look like. So remember that perimeter is 2b plus 2s. So if I want to find perimeter, I'm going to start with p equals. The very next thing in the formula is 2. So we write 2. Now 2b means 2 times b, so now I'm going to put in my multiplication dot and whatever b is. Well in this case, b, the base, is 8 inches. So I'm going to write in 8 inches. Next in the formula is a plus, so we write plus, followed by a 2, and then 2s means 2 times s, so times. And now s stands for the side. Well, this is my side, which is 5 inches, so plug in 5 inches. And now simplify. These should be fairly easy, so if you're capable of simplifying it one step, I'm going to go ahead and let you. So, 2 times 8 is 16, 2 times 5 is 10, and 16 plus 10 is 26. And so the perimeter is 26 inches. Moving on in 3, 2, 1. To find the area, we follow the formula A equals B H. And we already know the bases and the sides, but in, this introduces something new, an H. An H stands for height, and the height is a measurement that goes from one base to the other and is perpendicular to, or makes right angles with, both bases. And this is the height. Now, it's very important that we remember B and H make a right angle. We need to remember it here and remember it in the figure. If your two measurements are not making a right angle, then you do not have the height. Moving on in 3, 2, 1. So let's find the area of this example. So first of all, remember our formula. A equals B H. So we start with A equals, and then B here is 8 inches. BH means B times H, so I'm going to put a multiplication dot in now, followed by whatever H is. Well, now I've got a decision to make. Is H the 5 inches or 4 inches? Well, remember that the base and the height have to make a right angle. So if this is my base, that has to be my height. And now we multiply. 8 times 4 is 32, but then inches times inches combines to make square inches. And so the area is 32 square inches. Remember that a unit times itself becomes a square unit. So centimeters times centimeters will be square centimeters, miles times miles will be square miles, and so on and so on. Moving on in 3, 
two, one. We will be doing the fractions chart in class together. So right now we're going to take a look at multiplying three fractions. So let's consider this example. Two sevenths times three fifths times fourteen fifteenths. Well, ladies and gentlemen, just like if we only had two fractions, we could reduce before multiplying. We can still reduce before multiplying with three fractions. The trick is to remember that it's always a numerator that must reduce with one of your denominators. So if we take a look at the numerators, take a look at the denominators, look for a pair that can be reduced. So 2 and 7 can't reduce, 2 and 5 can't reduce, 2 and 15 can't reduce. Alright, well let's move on. 3 and 7 can't reduce, 3 and 5 can't reduce, but 3 and 15 can. They can both reduce by 3. 3 reduced by 3 becomes a 1. Five, 15 reduced by 3 becomes a 5. And now let's see if we can reduce more. That's a 1, can't reduce anymore. So now we're left with 14. Well, 14 and 7 obviously can reduce by 7. 7 reduced by 7 is a 1. 14 reduced by 7 is 2. And now if we look, we've got a 2, a 1, and a 2 on top. A 1, a 5, and a 5 on bottom. None of that can reduce, and so we're ready to multiply. 2 times 1 times 2 is 4. 1 times 5 times 5 is 25. And so the answer is 4 25ths. Now let's take a look at this example. 1 and a half times 2 and 2 thirds times 3 and 1 fourth. Well, first of all, remember that to multiply mixed numbers, we have to convert them first into fractions. So we can use the u to help us remember how to do that. So 1 and a half is going to be 1 times 2 plus 1. 1 times 2 plus 1 is 3, and the denominator was a 2. Now, 2 times 3 plus 2, well, 2 times 3 is 6, plus the 2 is 8. And the denominator was 3. And then finally, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So 13, and the denominator was a 4. If we look at this, we have a 3 in the numerator and a 3 in the denominator. So we can reduce those obviously both by 3, which turns them into 1's. An 8 and a 2 can both reduce by 2. So 2 reduced by 2 is 1, 8 reduced by 2 is 4. And now I've got a 4 on top and a 4 on bottom. Since they're the same, they will both reduce down to 1's. And so, when we're all done multiplying, I have 1 times 1 times 13 is 13 over 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 13 over 1 is just 13. This video will end in 3, 2, 1.